we created here may be unique in all of human existence. All the way to top. We created a paradise. What we're doing out here is so incredible. Our kids are amazing. In the snow. We can't go to mommy's funeral. We have to do what we're told. We want to see mom. Grandpa can't impress us. Hi, I'm Samantha Cox Parra from Cal TV Entertainment here with Matt Ross, the director and writer of the film Captain Fantastic. Thank you for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. Why did you focus on creating a film about parenting? Uh, because I am one. I think, you know, I, I have two kids. My daughter's 13 and my son's nine now, but when I was writing it a couple years ago, they were younger and I was thinking a great deal about my values and what I want to pass on to my kids. And I was watching my friends begin to have children and, and seeing their parenting styles, either being inspired by them or being confused by their parenting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my wife and I were discussing a great deal. It's something you do on a daily basis, if not an hourly basis, and sometimes we fight. You know, I mean, I start thinking, what, what are my values? What do I believe? What are our values? But what do I believe? And what do I want my kids to learn? And what's important to me? And I had a lot of questions, and I just put them into the story. Because I like movies that ask a lot of questions and don't necessarily clearly or explicitly answer them. I think the answers are there for you to read. Mm -hmm. I have my own ideas about what, what, what the answers are, if there are answers, and they're not always answers. You know, there are a lot of questions, mainly. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely about finding a balance, I feel, yeah. especially in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And so when Ben is raising these kids in the wilderness and teaching them all of these life skills, they are, they're doing well until they have to reintegrate back into society and they're hit with the social factor they're lacking. What do you think is a good balance for a family now who is struggling with technology and mm. finding that social balance? Personally, I think it's all about balance and moderation. You know, I, I say that, you know, we have these, we live in, an in a world with incredible technology. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that let alone being able to call someone with this device that you carry around, which is like out of Star Trek, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're, they're, there's so many apps that are incredible tools, our computers are incredible tools, but I think ultimately they're just tools. It's like a knife, you know, you can take a knife, and as I say, you can, I've said this before, you can, you can slit someone's throat with it, or you could cut an avocado, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tool, and it depends on how you use the tool, and I think that's a silly analogy, but it's true in that your phone and your computer, and, and it's all in how you use it, and whether you actually are present in the world or if you're con constantly in a virtual world. Obviously, being in nothing but a virtual world I don't think is a healthy thing, and you see parents or anyone. I mean, just this morning, I got up really early. I had to do some uh, an errand before we started, and I was looking around, and everyone I saw, everyone, <laughs> was walking around the street. This was in Berkeley, right in front of Pete's, and everyone was walking around on their phones, not even paying attention to what they're doing. And I saw this like seven examples of that. And you know, people are not connected, and some people get hit by cars because they're not connected, or they're—I should say—they're overly connected. They're not connected to the actual world. They're living virtually. Clearly, that's unhealthy. You know, we have to have balance. But I don't mean to demonize technology because I think it's just like anything else. It's how you use it. When you went to cast these mm -hmm. these Good. actors. How did you go about casting the children since they had to be an exceptional elitist family? You need strong actors. So on paper, it's a, it's a pretty, uh, it's a challenging task. Uh, you have kids who are, as you said, very well-spoken, they're very intelligent, they're well-read, they're physically fit, they play musical instruments, they can rock climb, they can fight, they can hunt and fish, they can speak many languages. Uh, there's a lot on paper. You know, what you're ultimately trying to do is, on one hand, objectively, you want to cast a kid who you think is a good actor. Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's in the eye of the beholder, though. And it's not really about delivering a performance or delivering a performance in the, in the callback. I'm really trying to match a kid's spirit with the spirit of the character, in a way, and then hope for them to be able to begin to flesh out that character. As a rhetoric major, I also noticed that Ben wants to raise his children to be philosopher kings. Yes, well. And making me think of Plato's Republic. Yeah, yeah. What other texts did you have in mind when writing the script? Well, I gave the kids in Vigo a variety of texts. Um, 
Vigo had read a lot of the books already. I, I think he had not read, I gave him some books about functional training and kind of uh, um, contemporary ideas about uh, training elite athletes and he hadn't read those specifically. He read all the, the, all the philosophy and the poetry and the politics. The kids I gave books and some of them really embraced the books and some of them were thought, really, it's summertime and you're giving me more reading to do. But I gave them uh, Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States, which I think every American should read. Mm -hmm. uh, there some f I gave them some poetry. I gave them, what else did I give them? Chomsky for Beginners. Uh, I gave them, you know, I mean, you know, he's six and he, now he's eight, but you know, some of them are quite young. They were 14, 15 when, so I was giving them things that I thought they would actually understand and read and I wasn't expecting them to read a very complicated text by Chomsky and I, you know, I, I did, I gave them things like, as I said, Chomsky for beginners, I gave them Marxism for beginners, democracy for beginners, some, some, some texts that I thought that they could, they could understand. I also gave them some work, um, Jared Diamond, I think he has a book called The World Before Us, which is about primitive cultures and, and how they were not so primitive, you know. Um, I don't think I gave them any Plato necessarily. Okay. Um, that was more, I think, built into the philosophy of the parents. Great. Okay, well, thank you for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. Make sure to catch Captain Fantastic in theaters July 22nd.